Ladies and gents, welcome to Suji Reaction, and this is milk, white poison, or healthy drink by the channel Kuz Gazar in a nutshell. Well, I hope it's healthy, otherwise I'm screwed. Over the last decade, milk has become a bit controversial. Some people say it's necessary and nutritious food, vital for healthy bones, but others say it can cause cancer. Everything can cause cancer, apparently, if you listen to the studies. They're not really studies, they're half as experiments that people take as a study. A lead to an early death. Who is right and why we drink it anyway? Yeah, when it comes to study, you know, there's always their daytime channels and things where just constantly people say, the new study study shows this, new study shows that. No, that's a parcel experiment that did not reach, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, community consensus. Like, this is solidified. We have tested it over and over again. This is solidified. Those studies are not like that. That's just one study was done with some uh, level of elements to it in control environment. And people just say, okay, that's definitive. That is how it is. So people just take that and run with it. Uh, I guess there was a study once about, uh, you know, for microwaves from phone. And they're like, that can cause cancer, so you shouldn't put, you know, phones over your head. One study was done that might so that it can happen. And people just ran with it. Even today, that kind of misinformation is still flowing around the world. While after that, there were many studies was done. And half of the studies showed that it could have an effect. Half of the studies showed that it has no effect. So that's the, that's the, that's the equivalent of saying that there is no effect. Like this study proves nothing. Like, you know, if the half of time it doesn't have effect and half of time it does, then clearly it means that, you know, it's not clear. I mean, it's not it's not that phones and microwaves from phones can cause mental issues or cancer, things like that, because half of them did not do it. That's how studies work. But nobody saw that. People just ran with the one study that was done early on and people just like, oh, this is the new study. That's how things goes today. A study happens somewhere with the partial result without, you know, many research doing on it. Just one study and people just runs with it. Same thing with the brain activity thing where, you know, we only know 10% of what our brain does. That's what a scientist said because at the time there was no much research was done on it. We only know what 10% of our brain does. People just took that as... We only use 10% of our brain, 90%, so we have potential. We could have superpower and shit like that. There was, I think, movie Lucy or whatever, in which shows she's using 20% of brain, she's using 30% of brain, she's using 40% of brain, changing her hair or something, color of the hair and shit like that. I mean, no, that's not true. So study shows, no, milk is not bad. Milk is crucial. This video is going to be fun. I wrote quite a few because that videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the classes of plays. Check out the for it. Check out the plays too, like Real Life Flow, CGP Grey, Tier Zoo, Internet Show, and things like that. And yeah, let's watch this one. Over the last decade, milk has become a bit controversial. Some people say it's a necessary and nutritious food, vital for healthy bones. But others say it can cause cancer and lead to an early death. So, who's right? And why we this is why every time there is a study on anything, anything, usually it comes back like this could cause cancer. And people are this scared like, if everything causes cancer, what am I supposed to do? Now, everything doesn't cause cancer. Some studies shows that it could contribute to it, but other studies I've done after that shows that it could not. So that's, there is no effect there. It's 50-50. Drinking it anyway. You know, this 50-50 result, which it just means that, you know, there is some other effect going on here. That, you know, if, the, if there's a study that says that like, milk causes cancer and the, uh, half of the study shows that milk doesn't cause cancer, then it means that milk is not the reason for the effect. It must be something else. So milk doesn't cause cancer in that sense if it's 50-50%. But people don't see that. Milk is the basis of every mammal's diet after birth when our digestive systems are immature and small. Basically, it's power food to kickstart our bodies and help us grow. Milk is rich in fat, vitamins, minerals and milk sugar, lactose. On top of that, for a while after birth, it also contains antibodies and proteins that protect us from infections and regulate our immune system. But it's a lot of effort for mothers to produce. Eventually, humans stop drinking mother's milk and transition to the diet of their parents. This is how it's been for thousands of years. 
until about 11,000 years ago when our ancestors settled down in the first agricultural communities. Soon, they domesticated the first dairy animals, goats, sheep and cattle. They found that dairy animals are able to eat useless and abundant stuff and turn it into nutritious and tasty food. This made a huge difference in terms of survival, especially in hard times. So groups that had milk available had an evolutionary advantage. And through natural selection, it changed the genes of communities who consumed a lot of it. This adaptation has to do with a specialized enzyme, lactase. Babies have a lot of it in their system. Yeah, I mean, it really changed, you know, people's perspective because if a harvest goes wrong, people starve. But if you have milk, you could create lots of things using milk, like curds and, I guess, cottage cheese and God knows how many cheese and different type of things. So, and just drink milk, it has calories. So they can break down the milk sugar lactose and digest milk easily. But the older we grow, the fewer lactase enzymes our body produces. Worldwide, about 65% of the population do not have the enzyme after infancy, which means they are not able to digest more than about 150 milliliters each day. That's not much. This lactose intolerance is not spread evenly around the world, though. In some East Asian communities, for example, it's up to 90%. Damn! In Northern Europe and North America, the rates are the lowest overall. What? So Euro Europe and USA has low intolerance ratio, so they are not that much lacto lactose intolerant. Well, you know, in America and even in the Europe, like Britain and everywhere, th those are the people who bitches the most, like, uh, is, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, is, uh, I'm lactose intolerant, you know, yeah, does that, the milk, is, does that thing have milk in it, and things like that. I mean, you people are the low intolerance rate people compared to everybody else. And it's mostly USA I heard from that, you know, uh, you know, does that thing have milk in it? I'm lactose intolerant. Everybody, I'm lactose intolerant. Are you sure you're lactose intolerant? Or is this one of those things? Is, it, is that gluten free? Because gluten is bad somehow. Gluten is bad who has gluten issues. Not everybody, but it's just become a thing. Everybody's like, you know, I, I want gluten free. You know, I'm lactose intolerant. Just because you consume milk so much at one point and you have gas problem does not make you lactose intolerant. There are probably a few reasons for this uneven distribution. The trait was first introduced by random mutation, which happened independently of each other in a few populations. The fact that farming replaced hunting and gathering more and more created natural selection pressure people who were able to digest lactose had more foods at hand, which was an advantage. The migration of dairy farmers to the north then spread it further, which probably pushed back populations there that didn't have the trait. Okay, but if milk has been a valuable part of our diet for thousands of years, why is it so controversial? There are a number of claims regarding the negative and positive health effects of milk. The negative ones cover a wide variety. From brittle bones to cancer and cardiovascular diseases to intolerance and allergies. So how do they hold up? Some older studies found a connection between milk and a high risk of breast, colon and prostate cancer. But meta-analyses found no impact on your cancer risk. On the contrary, the calcium in milk might even have a protective effect against colon cancer. Although this could be calcium in general, it's not clear milk plays a role in this effect. Only studies on prostate cancer showed an increased risk for people who consumed more than one and a quarter liters of milk a day. But again, the association is inconsistent and other studies don't find any effect. We discuss these studies in more detail. One and a quarter liter is already way too much already. I mean, how are you drinking that much? I mean. A liter or less than a liter feels like even if you drink a lot, that would be the case. One and a quarter liter is already way too much. Now in our sources document. All in all, the research seems to show that if you drink between 100 to 250 milliliters of milk per day, cancer is not a concern. Similarly, meta-analyses could not find any impact from milk or dairy products on your risk of heart disease, stroke or your total mortality. 
Some studies even suggested that high blood pressure might be rarer in people who eat a lot of dairy, although the evidence is not strong enough to claim this with confidence. The case gets more complicated, though, when we look at bones. A number of studies found neither positive nor negative effects for adults. What most people worry most about, though, are harmful amounts of pesticides, antibiotics or hormones. There are hormones in milk, but only in very low concentrations. For example, to get the same amount of hormones as from the pill, you'd need to drink about 5,000 litres of milk, and even if you did, most hormones would be destroyed by your digestive system before they could affect you. Which there is you the go. reason why so much medication is coated, to protect it from our digestion. For pesticides and antibiotics, there are regulations in most parts of the world that only allow completely harmless amounts. Milk that surpasses these thresholds is not allowed to go on the shelf, so there's nothing in particular to worry about. Besides allergies and those suffering from lactose intolerances, the best-known negative effects of milk are probably acne and general discomfort after drinking milk or eating dairy products. And here, the effects are very real. For example, skimmed milk has been found to statistically increase the rate of acne by 24%. Allergies <laughs> against milk products are especially prevalent among children, with 1 in 18 kids in Germany suffering from them. In general, these allergies tend to get better or disappear as they grow older, though. OK, is milk healthy then? Milk, no matter if it comes from mothers, cows, sheep, goats or camels, is a nutrient-dense food. Well, I hope it's healthy because I'm I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat any you know meat, eggs, uh, you know chicken or whatever. I don't eat none of that. So I rely on dairy for protein. I mean I know there's you know protein in lentils and things like that, but you need to consume a lot amount of that, and that has immense calorie and more and more carbs. I need dairy for protein. That's what whey protein is. When you consume whey protein, you are consuming part of milk. So, you know, milk is important. I mean, not everybody's lactose intolerant. I feel like, you know, people, when there's some gastric issues, they just assume they are lactose intolerant. I mean, lots of people are, but not at that amount, especially when it, if it comes from the Europe and USA, like, I'm lactose intolerant. Chances of you being lactose intolerant is really small, like we just saw. In India, there is a high chance of people being lactose intolerant. So, you know, even I, didn't, I don't know anyone who's lactose intolerant, let's just say. I'm not, nobody in my family is, I'm pretty sure my friends and every, in my fa you know, distance family, nobody is lactose intolerant. Everybody drink milk it's at a certain level. So, you know, milk is important, man. And as far as, you know, all the basic uh, hormones and all the pesticides and whatever it could be inside, remember, when you eat chicken, meat and things like that, they have more antibiotics because people pushed into the animals immense amount of antibiotics than you would ever get from milk. So just chill out, man. Contains all necessary macronutrients and many micronutrients. Especially in regions where people struggle to get enough calories, milk can contribute to a healthy life and lower child mortality. For those living in the developed world, in general, milk is not harmful if you are not allergic or intolerant to it. Especially for children, it's a good way to get large amounts of calcium, and for vegetarians, it's a good source of vitamin B12 and B vitamins in general. This does not mean there are not other alternatives with the same effect. You do not need to drink milk to be healthy. Milk is also definitely not a substitute for water. Milk is power food, and the additional calories from drinking a lot of it on a regular basis can contribute to being overweight. Especially flavoured milk or chocolate milk is more comparable to beverages like lemonade than a healthy snack. And there's another thing to consider. Milk production has a significant impact on the global climate. About 33% of cropland is used to feed grazing animals, including dairy cattle. Even though the carbon footprint of dairy products has declined since 1990, dairy production is still responsible for 3% of all greenhouse gas emissions, even more than all aeroplanes combined. Milk is a huge industry, and sadly most of its production in factory farms causes incredible suffering. Cows are impregnated over and over, separated from their young shortly after birth, and slaughtered once their tortured bodies are not productive anymore. We can't ignore that much of the milk we consume stems from an industry that is basically torture and contributes to climate change. 
What about? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you know, when you milk a cow, that's the least amount of uh, issue the cow will have than if you murder a cow and eat it. I mean, and you know, basically, farm is uh, productive for cows too. Because, you know, basically humans feed them, humans house them, I guess. I mean, it's not as bad as killing them and eating them. So, yeah. Milk is important, man. For, you know, basically, especially for vegetarians. I mean, yeah, there is an option like nuts and things. But you can't take that at high amounts. It has its own problems. Plant-based milk. In terms of protein levels and nutritional value, only soy milk can compare to cow milk. The others <laughs> need to be artificially enriched to reach similar levels of vitamins and calcium. So they can be an alternative to milk. And another option might be available soon. Several startups have created non-animal milk that is nutritionally identical to dairy milk, for GMO. example through fermentation by gene-modified bacteria. This lab-grown milk can... Here, have a milk. This is a GMO milk. People will run out of the roof faster than before you could speak again. ...even be turned into cheese, something that plant-based alternatives struggle with because they lack casein and whey protein, the key ingredients that give dairy its taste and structure. The environmental impact is a different story, though. Many milk alternatives use significantly less energy, land and less water to produce, so they have a much lower environmental impact than animal milk. If you want to have the lowest possible negative impact on the planet, the best choice is whatever milk alternative is regional. That's a stretch, man. Come on, 3% is not that much compared to everything else. If you want to lower the, you know, uh, all the emissions of the world, you know, lower everything else, like your, I guess, you know, energy source. Go to solar energy, renewable sources, things like that. Lowering dairy is not going to help anyone. That's not going to be that much. 3% is not that much. It's not 30%, it's 3%. Other 97% needs to be addressed before you go to that 3%. As with almost any topic, milk is complicated. It's not harmful for the majority of the population and it's crucial for many people around the world. It's good, nutritious food, but also harmful to the planet and causes a lot of suffering. We need to decide as a society how we want to deal with these facts. Yeah, so basically, uh, milk, if you're lactose intolerant, that's an issue. Even though in Western world, very less people are lactose intolerant, so people just, most times, just, they just think they're lactose intolerant. But yeah, and as far as the effect on the world, cow suffrage it comes from more of a, you know, labor work in, you know, in farming or even, you know, killing them uh, for meat. That's worse than milking them. Milking them is not, yeah, I mean, they do get things in the back, like humans do take care of them. So that's something. And as far as the, you know, emissions goes, 3% is not that much. They, cows produce methane, sure. I mean, methane is worse than carbon dioxide when it comes to greenhouse effect. But it's 3%, not other 97% needs to be addressed before you go to 3%. So, you know, it's, it's a, milk is important. Dairy products are important when whoever is vegetarian. And people are slowly becoming vegetarian, slowly. They are stay going away from the meat and things like that. They are slowly becoming vegetarian. So things like this, dairy is going to be important. So yeah. All right, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction on the day. There's a link in the description. Check out the castle. Please check out the end cards and I'll see you next time.